And just like that, the race for best animated feature at the Oscars just got a lot more crowded. My name is Zach. Welcome to my channel where I love discussing all new things cinema, all new things Disney, and all things entertainment in general. And I really do appreciate you guys clicking on this thumbnail today. I really hope you enjoy your stay. Because this time around, we're hopping on down to La Casa Madrigal to check out Encanto. The 60th film from Walt Disney Animation Studios. My god, where did the time go? And this is the second film under the Disney banner with original songs by the one and only Lin-Manuel Miranda after Moana came out five years ago. So that should tell you how fun this is gonna be, shouldn't it? And the Madrigals are an extraordinary family who live hidden in the mountains of Colombia in a charmed place called the Encanto. And the magic of the Encanto has blessed every child in the family with a unique gift. Every child that is except for our hero, Mirabel, voiced by Stephanie Beatriz. However, she soon may be the Madrigal's last hope when she discovers a vision from an estranged family member that basically tells her that the magic surrounding the Encanto is now in danger. And don't worry, I'm not going to get into spoilers regarding how this vision exactly plays out beat for beat, but lo and behold, I found Encanto beautiful. And it all starts with how this movie looks. Trust me, I feel like it'd be kind of redundant if I were to go into detail about how beautiful this animation is. I mean, just look at the movie. This animation is astoundingly good. Much like Luca, this is a very bright, vibrant, and colorful film throughout. It's very easy on the eyes. Except unlike Luca, which was exclusive to the streaming platform, this is a movie I think you have to experience on a big screen to really take it all in. The atmosphere and the culture of this movie is so neat. I, for one, am loving the representation on display here. I also love the magical elements of this flick. This house the family lives in almost becomes a character of its own, with the tiles doing this cool little tidal wave. I mean, the windows are coming alive left and right. This is a magnificent idea. Speaking of magnificent, I gotta talk about this voice cast as well. There is not one weak link. Every single one is cast perfectly, and they embody their characters to a T. John Leguizamo has a very fun turn as Bruno, the estranged uncle. He can be very funny, yes, but there was a pleasantly surprising amount of heart and soul to his character that was just so heartbreaking. But let's face it, guys. The big star coming out of this movie is Stephanie Beatriz as our hero Mirabel. And I am so, so happy for Stephanie, especially as a big, big fan of Brooklyn Nine-Nine that I am. She is awesome as our lead here, who, correct me if I'm wrong, Mirabel might be the first Disney princess to wear glasses, which is crazy to think about. Not only does she bring massive amounts of energy to the proceedings, but I think her character is going to inspire a lot of young kids when they go to see this thing. And I'll get into why that is in a moment, but let's just say for right now, Mirabel is so easy to love and so, so easy to root for. But that brings me to the film's morals and the lesson they're trying to get across here. For young kids and grown adults like myself for that matter, this is a very, very resounding message, especially as we're getting oversaturated with films all about superpowers and gifts and what have you. But this film basically touches on the matter that if you're born with gifts or not, or special talents as it were, it doesn't matter. No matter what, you are special the way you are. And I think it's a great message, especially for blockbuster cinema right now. We are seeing superhero flicks every single month at this point. So seeing our main lead as someone with no powers trying her hardest to save the day and bring honor to her house, I think that's a fantastic idea. Like I mentioned, this film is going to inspire a lot of people when they go to the theater to check it out. I want to talk a little bit about this musical score as well, of course, because Lin-Manuel Miranda, I am convinced, is a genius who can do no wrong. And let's just say that he's done it again, my friends. The music in this movie, staggering. He's been on quite the roll lately this past year, 2021, with an In the Heights movie adaptation, still one of my top films of the year, mind you, as well as just directing Tick, Tick, Boom, which was released this past weekend on Netflix. Need any more proof that this guy is a superstar? Now, I don't want to say that Encanto was my favorite score of his, it does bring me into some of my issues that I had with this film. I actually wasn't the biggest fan of the opening number. I know that's crazy seeing as how I just praised this guy, but the basic layout introducing each member of the family along with their gifts is a fine setup for the proceedings. But the lyrics didn't just flow as well for me. It honestly felt a little bit uneven. Speaking of uneven, let me just say for the record that I adore all these side characters that were introduced to. Especially Mirabel's two older sisters, Luisa and Isabella, who 
both have some insane powers. Luis has got super strength, and then Isabella has the power to have flowers blossom all around her. Those are both really neat, and the characters that we do meet along the way with these special gifts, they're all super unique. I love the little cousin Antonio who has the power of talking to animals. I also love Mirabel's mother in this movie. She has the power to heal any wound or disease with just one simple meal. This film is clearly throwing tons at us, but I feel very similar to this film as I feel with Ratatouille, which is another Disney Pixar film that I love. But these side characters unfortunately feel very rushed and one note. I feel like the film definitely scratches the surface of a lot of character relationships between Mirabel and her sisters. Hell, even with her parents. Very one note relationships. And I think if you were to dig a little bit deeper into these relationships and these given circumstances, I feel like Encanto would feel a lot more complete. Because this film flew by, clocking in just a hair over 90 minutes and trust me there is nothing wrong with the faster pace for a film but the credits started rolling and I kind of wanted a little bit more. Encanto is a movie clearly brimming with ideas which can work against it as I've alluded to but despite my issues with this film wanting more and what have you this is still pretty damn good. And that brings me to perhaps my biggest praise for Encanto, the story as well as its structure. Because we are just centered on the Madrigal family, as it were. There is no overbearing villain on the outside looking in. And you gotta admire a Disney flick every time they go this non-traditional route by not having a formal villain. Now, I guess if you were to say there was an antagonist in Encanto, it would be basically these family members' ego getting in the way of one another. But I'm glad they didn't go the cliched route of the villain reveal or anything like that like they do with Wreck-It Ralph. I really, really dug this movie and that's all to go along with one of the most heartwarming endings to a movie you'll see all year long. Overall, I did really enjoy myself checking out Encanto. I think I would personally place Raya and the Last of the Dragon just above this in my Disney rankings if I were to do a tier, but if you're a huge Disney geek like I am, I think you're going to find a lot to love with this one. I'm going to give Encanto an A-. This was such a magical experience at the cinema like only Disney can. And this is a surefire hit for your entire family to go to the theater and enjoy on Thanksgiving weekend. Let me know if you watched Encanto, what you thought of it down in the comments section below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? And let me know which Disney animation is your all-time favorite of the bunch. I actually just reviewed my favorite in Beauty and the Beast earlier this week. You guys can go check that out if you want to, but feel free, sound off down in the comments section below all of your thoughts on Encanto, all your thoughts on Disney Animation. 60 films going strong for this studio with no sign of stopping. If you guys are enjoying this content and you want to continue discussing cinema and all things entertainment, this is definitely a place that you can do it. So if I were you and you're new to the channel, definitely would recommend smashing that subscribe button down below as hard as you possibly can. This channel is on the road to 1,000 subscribers, which I'm hoping to reach very, very soon. It's absolutely beneficial in helping get this content out there. It's also beneficial to you because you'll be the first ones to know anytime a new upload hits. And hitting that thumbs up button on your way out is also extremely helpful in getting the rest of this content out there. And stay tuned, of course, for more exciting content hitting this channel very, very soon. I will be reviewing both House of Gucci and Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City very, very soon. So stay tuned for all that and much, much more. Y'all are the best. Again, I cannot thank you enough for your support of the channel up to this point. With all that being said, back talk, commence.